Oh, so today I'm testing the lossless scaling and interesting enough, this application can give you free FPS. Yeah, absolutely free. So already you can see I'm testing the Cyberpunk 2077 and well, this is the application. It looks pretty simple, not gonna lie. You, you can already tell this is the this is the whole application. This is literally like a window settings. It, it feels like that because you know, the, the window itself looks like a window settings window, right? So yeah, this is the whole application. Let's just uh, zoom into it or enlarge it. And yeah, this is the whole application. You can see it says lossless scaling. 2.10.1 so yeah it's uh not the latest version because i believe there will be another version already out that will support four times of scale we're gonna come into that of course but first let's look into the whole application so there's a scaling mode as you can see you can select it auto or custom and then you can change the scale factor how much you want to scale your image or your game and by the way this application also works for any kind of video like even youtube or any kind of media player i'm gonna come into that but it's, it's a quite interesting interesting application not gonna lie so let's look into it so as for the scaling mode you can choose custom and then you know the aspect ratio which is full screen or you know whatever aspect ratio if you choose auto you don't have to change that you know and there is scaling type and if you look closely here there's literally multiple upscalers that you can use basically like amd fsr although this is not the fsr 3.0 it's just fsr 1 so you don't want to use fsr 1 it's, it doesn't really work that good and then there's nvidia image scaling you can use that too and then there's integer i never heard of these and then nearest neighbor okay interesting anime 4k maybe i, I felt i feel like anime 4k turns out makes the image anime type I, I have no idea honestly and they have their own upscaler which is ls1 so lossless scaling upscaler is also something which is based on fsr anyway so you can just literally use the fsr but that's not what we're looking into because that's not the actual frame generator because what we're looking at is the frame generation exactly so we have two versions of it based on your gpu of course i'm using the rx 570 so that's why i'm getting these versions which is the lf lsfg 2.2 and 2 and 1.1 but if you have a different gpu or more modern gpu then you might have a different version of that even 3.3 i think that is the latest version of that i could be wrong but if you have a different gpu always use the latest version because that would be the better one of course so yeah for frame generation you can use any of these i feel, feel like that the latest version would be good and for mode this is x2 x3 and there will be another mode called x4 so x4 hasn't been released yet or maybe it will be uh based on when i upload this video because you know it's, it's gonna be releasing this week so we'll see about that so x2 x3 what are these basically you can double triple or quadruple your frame generation basically whatever frame that you have the base frame of your games will be doubled or tripled or even quadrupled based on what you choose depending on which mode you choose however it will literally reduce your fps the base fps i'll come to that but now let's look into the other settings so as for cursor you can you know uh the mouse cursor you're looking at right here you can clip cursor adjust the cursor speed and whatever that is that's not important anyway as for rendering you can also have like v-sync or default i i set to default because you don't really need v-sync when you're generating frame anyway it really not necessary because you know you can turn this off right you can turn this off and use the v-sync but it's not really important because it, it literally does the same v-sync which we already know in this other setting that we can find so yeah it's not that really impo important we're gonna stay with default you can also turn this off but turning this off literally gives you no value by using the frame generation because then you will introduce tiering we don't want that absolutely not the default is good enough and of course keep the max frame latency to one because you don't want latency to be added like i don't really see the point of using having more latency in your output so that's not really important you can also have hdr support so that's pretty cool if you have hdr monitor that will be giving you the HDR visual so that's pretty nice you can also draw FPS as for capture you can capture any API using any of these I think the best one is the DXGI for the capturing any kind of application so I will stick with that and yeah prefer GPU if you have multiple GPU that option will show up I have only one so only one which is auto is showing up so yeah whatever that is same goes for display multiple display you can choose whatever display you want and you can also crop the input whatever you're inputting which I see no use but maybe you can use it and yeah there's multi-display mode there's windowed mode in legacy settings and the best one is the vrr support variable refresh rate basically i want this to be turned on and you should too because that gives you a variable refresh rate that is pretty good not gonna lie it's pretty good so yeah, before you begin the upscaling or the frame generation what you need to do is basically go to the settings right uh, i'll suggest the video settings and always put your windowed mode to borderless window or even window depending on what you want never go full screen because full screen doesn't really 
actually apply to this application because this is a third party application it needs to have a direct contact because but because when you go full screen you only have this particular window open the other windows are disabled but when you have windowed borderless all the other windows are available to work with so that's when the frame generation really applies because it's a third party software also you can turn off the vsync because you don't really need it because you know other in the other application we, we're literally doing the same thing so we don't really need that all right so what you need to do after applying all the applications oh of course one more thing is that there's a there's something called performance mode if you have a gpu that is not strong enough like an rx 570 580 or 1060 whatever gpu you're using which is not current generation or even the previous generation it's an older generation then i would suggest turning on the performance mode because then you will have a less likely to have lower best base frames you don't want to lower your base frames that is not recommended at all so i would turn this on because of course i'm playing cyberpunk with rx 570 and clearly rx 570 isn't going to give you the best output the best base frames all right so as you can see i'm playing cyberpunk 2077 and i'm getting 51 fps in this particular scene of course again it's going to differ depending on which scene you are but the game feels very sluggish this is not playable at all because you know the frame rate is pretty high clearly also i included the frame time because you know you have a better idea how much lag you're getting into the game so as you can see i'm getting 49 45 46 43 you know sometimes somewhere around there and i'm getting frame time of 19 to 20 milliseconds so that's pretty high even though it's not laggy don't get me wrong it's just that it's very choppy yeah it's pretty choppy and not a good experience at all and this is why lossless scaling comes in to the play because you know it's, it's going to be upscaling the fps the base fps will go down as you will see right now the base fps will go down as you enable the frame generation but the smoothness will be much better just like the double the fps that you'd be getting so again we are here we have the whole settings ready what we're gonna do we're gonna go for the x2 mode and performance mode on because we're using a low, lower tier gpu here and then we're gonna scale it and you know you have like five seconds so in five seconds you go to the application that you want to scale and there we go as you can see the fps here is 40 fps like you you lose a lot of fps the base fps of course but it's not really like that bad considering you're also upscaling the output the output would be literally what you can see is 80 somewhere around 80 depends of course so as you can see we're getting 98 82 88 that is what you're seeing whatever fps i'm getting right over here which is the 41 right 41 42 whatever fps i'm getting is a bit lower because i'm also recording so keep that in mind you should be getting more fps on my unrecorded session i would be getting around like 50 fps even when the uh, frame generation is on so yeah keep that in mind is that depending on your gpu of course but the entire point of this video is not really show you the performance rather than how much you can gain right now i'm getting look you can clearly see i'm getting 99 104 and of course when i move around i'm getting 95 48 whatever it's not really important all right so as you can see i'm getting 93 fps of course and yeah the game feels smooth it's quite smooth not gonna lie it's it's smoother than ever and of course i'm using the upscaler and that's why you're seeing that but when i you know when you look at the main frame which is the base frame which is 43 here clearly you can see that 43 42 41 depending on of course the scene yeah and then when you look into the frame rate that we're looking at is the upscaled frame rate or the frame generated frame rate so that is doubling somewhat doubling and of course when i uh bring in this it's kind of goes down you can clearly see it go, goes down to 85 and then when i you know don't show it it goes up a little bit because you know depending on the application usage that would interfere with the gpu so anyway so basically you can clearly tell is that we are getting more frame generation or double the frames so what about extreme mode i don't really recommend it i'll come to that why because when i turn on the extreme mode let's okay let's go into it right look at the base frame it's like we lose we lost like i don't know three fps four fps or even five fps depending on of course but the problem is there are some other minor issues like you can see the uh, mouse in front of my I, I guess that will be fixed if i just go back again unscale this and then scale back that should fix the problem sometimes you will see some bugs and stuff but that's all right okay so this is that's gone so this is triple the frame rate right but there's some problem which is it is not choppy not that much but it's not really that great because your base frame which you can already see is like 39 and something around around that which doesn't really benefit too much because cl clearly it, it is like there is some input lag clearly you can you can notice that I, i'm noticing some serious input lag that i don't think it's good for the gameplay but it's pretty smooth like it's very smooth like you're literally tripling the fps by the way so 
that should you can see I'm, I'm getting 120 fps as you can see we're getting like 113 and 114 when i remove this of course you can clearly see that 120 right 125 136 130 so it's basically tripling the fps but the problem with that is that when you have base frame of 39 or 40 the recommended for x3 or even x4 should be the base frame of 60 fps so you need at least 60 fps to enjoy a good smooth frame rate which is you know higher fps which is 120 130 you know the triple triple or even quadruple because when you quadruple that amount is going to be 160 plus but right now we don't really have it but you will be able to do that the problem with that is that your base frame is 40 fps you don't want that you want 60 fps base frame even after when you enable lossless scaling so the condition is you need to have in lossless scaling enabled and then your base frame needs to be 60 fps because right now when i disable lossless scaling right so let's go into it. when i unscale this right and now let's go to the game look at this i'm getting 50 fps right and it's a bit choppy sometimes 50 sometimes 45 again whatever the fps is you need to have base frame of 60 fps when the lossless scaling is scaling or working not when you are not scaling like for example if you get 50 right now i'm getting 50 and when i ena enable lossless scaling i would be getting around 40 fps right so you need to have 60 fps when you turn on the lossless scaling that's the best way you can use the x3 or even x4 whatever you want to use so again let me just enable the uh, or scale it at x2 because that is a recommended you can go below 60 fps with x2 but you can't really enjoy i mean you still can go x3 and x4 but i don't think that is fun to play even when the base fps is going like 30 fps it's not fun to play right because remember the base fps has a demand the lower your fps there is less data to work with for the application and that's why you'll see some kind of like anomalies on your screen some artifacts you don't want that of course because you I, I gave you an example that the cursor was popping up that is an that's an anomaly right there so enable it to x2 if you have a lower tier gpu or if you can't reach 60 fps base when turning on the scaling that's when you should enable only x2 but if you can go beyond 60 fps and you want to enjoy higher refresh rate gaming yes then you can enable x3 there's no problem with that so x2 scale it go to the game and you see the fps drop from 51 to 42 right there 43 42 but the game is smooth and the input lag is there don't get me wrong the input lag is still there is that for triple a titles or for single player games this is no big deal clearly this is not a big deal at all because you can still play the game fine and it feels smooth like the whole thing is smooth you don't feel sluggish at all it's pretty smooth the whole game is smooth right because i'm doubling the fps with frame generation the lossless scaling frame generation which is right now it's 80 sometimes the fps drop to 30 but no big deal because the x2 version is not going to interfere with the input lag because remember the more you increase the modes which is x3 or x4 the more input lag will be introduced right to mitigate that that's why the minimum requirement is 60 fps which is recommended again recommended which is 60 fps base and then you'll be able to mitigate the input lag clearly right now we're getting 40 35 but the input lag is pretty small oh and not to mention i'm playing the game on low settings let me just show you that yeah i'm playing on low settings because of course the gpu cannot handle high fps clearly but even then you can see that if i go like high right and go to the game let's see how much we get we're getting 30 fps base but clearly the game is not fun to play it's lagging as you can see the frame time which is 33 or even more than that sometimes it goes beyond that because when i when i'm moving around it feels very sluggish of course let me just disable some of the features which is film grain these are not that great and motion blur of course motion blur is like not that good so let's just turn off that and yeah now we're gonna get like 30 yeah it's, it's the same but the lag is tremendous right the lag is tremendous you don't want to play the game like this but this is why when you go down too much the upscaler struggles because you don't have much data to work with so it's not going to be able to give you better output clearly so as i mentioned that we can also you know upscale the video like i'm using a youtube video right but there's one slight problem is that when i scale like right here when i scale it and when i go to the application which is uh browser of course i'm getting like 150 you can't really see that right now but for the purpose of this particular i don't have to really show i can tell you we're getting 150 fps right now 
of course frame generated and of course we have the x2 scaling so 150 already which is kind of crazy because of course my refresh rate is 75 hertz so that is what we are getting because as the screen is like 75 hertz we're getting like 150 because you know double that so yeah now let's play the video and then you'll see that it's much smoother comparatively it's much way smoother like it's crazy how smooth that is you can also go full screen you have no problem with that but yeah this is how it's going like you can literally have the video to be upscaled by x2 but it kind of feels too like fast sometimes of course this is my video of course about the tax shark x6 review but anyway uh this particular video is going 150 this is kind of wild like, it's li literally upscaling at 150 but the video is at 60 fps right but as my monitor refresh rate is 75 it's literally going 150 and that's why it feels super fast or just it's pretty it's not super fast it feels smooth like way too smooth than usual so if you like watching like movies at not at 24 fps because you know your general movies are 24 fps you can literally use this because it's a it's an interesting way to use this even the videos get upscaled i suggest not to upscale it to x3 because then you'll have motion sickness clearly because it's way too smooth and you don't want to have motion sickness while watching a, a movie right so yeah, basically this is the whole application. What you can do is that you can generate any mode you want to use, which is X2, X3, and any game. Exactly. You can literally use this in any game. Like, you don't have any restriction because it's a third-party software. You can literally use any game you want. And this is the best thing about this particular software. If you don't have upscaler in a game, you can literally just, you know, turn this on. And for single-player titles, it's not going to be a big deal. Even for, like, multiplayer, I don't recommend this, but you can still do it even though I don't think in multiplayer games you don't want to do it, unless the multiplayer games doesn't really require a uh, quick movement, then maybe, I guess. But for slower movement games or even for AAA titles or for single player titles, this is a perfect application to use and you can literally use them in any game. So yeah. Also not to mention, you can grab this particular software on Steam. I think it's like $7, I think. That is my particular guess would be. $7, it's cheap. It's literally seven dollars. I mean, it shouldn't be a big deal to pay it, you know. So, yeah, I think they deserve it, and they really did a good job here.